Hi class, it's Professor Barry Brennan here. Uh, this is for my interpersonal communication class. And today we're going to talk about conflict. Often this is a topic that uh, nobody ever wants to talk about, and I get it. It's uncomfortable, right? Conflict is uncomfortable. So what do we do when we have conflict with our interpersonal relationships, with people that are close to us, the people that matter, right? What do we do? We're going to look at that. We're going to look at how do we manage our own conflict? What is conflict by defining it? Uh, we're going to get into it. So I imagine this is going to take about two to three videos, and I'm going to go straight to the PowerPoint now. Here we go. All right. Conflict in relationship, managing interpersonal conflict. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at what we think of when we say the nature of conflict. What is that? What do we mean by that? So the nature of conflict is, I'm going to give you kind of a definition. It's an express struggle between at least two interdependent parties or interdependent people. Okay, I want you to think back about what the word interdependent means. So it, it means that the two people are connected in some way, right? Their relationship has been formed. So they matter to each other. They need each other. They matter. Okay, that's, that's key. Because we don't usually have conflict with people we don't care about, right? Think about that. So an express struggle between at least two interdependent people who perceive incompatible goals, so they're not on the same page, right? Scarce resources, meaning there's not going to be enough, fear of not having enough, and interference from another party that's help, that's from achieving their goal. Okay, so let's kind of break that down. So it has to be an express struggle. What do I mean by that? We have to know what's happening. Conflict can be happening inside of you and you might contain that conflict and in fact a video that you're going to watch in this class says that there's conflict can happen to yourself but honestly in communication we're looking at communication because that's what we look at in this class conflict only happens when it's expressed okay there has to be something how do you know that you're having conflict with someone if they don't tell you you might not even know this personally just happened to me recently I didn't even know there was conflict with me personally until it was stated that there was. I had no idea. Okay, I was just guessing. But if someone doesn't communicate the conflict, then how do you know? It has to be expressed. There have to be perceived, perceived, another key word, perceived incompatible goals. So that person or you believes, sees that, that where you're going is not the same place or what you want isn't the same thing. It's perceived. Doesn't mean it's true. It's perceived. This is key. You have to have perceived, again, doesn't mean it's true. It's what you think it is. Perceived scarce resources. There's not enough. Not enough time. Not enough money. Not enough clothes. Not enough gasoline, not enough cars, uh, not enough health, whatever it is. Okay? Struggle. Think about this. Have you ever had, uh, those of you that are married in the class or have been in any long-term relationships, have you ever been with someone where you uh, felt like um, they're, not, they're not healthy, you're healthy, but they're not? And there's a conflict about that? Okay, think about what that is. Incompatible goals, scarce resources. Interdependence. You got to matter to each other. There's something in a way that you are connected. That can even be between teacher and student or boss, your supervisor and employee. Okay, you do have an interdependence. You do need each other. Not the same way that spouses need each other or best friends need each other, but you do, there is, you do need each other on some level. You make up a relationship together. And interference from another party. What does that mean? I mean somehow, it could be, it doesn't, party doesn't have to be a person. Something else is interfering with your relationship. Okay? 
something else is interfering. So I'm going to give you an example of something that happened to me recently. So uh, my partner and I had been discussing moving to another state. And we have these two friends that live in that state. And we had been pretty sure that that's what we were going to do. Not, not right away, but in the next couple of years. And then we got information that uh, my partner has two sisters. One lives here and uh, the other one lives in Kauai, which is like one of the islands in Hawaii. And she decided she and her husband are moving back here and they're actually moving to this area, to Fresno, actually Madeira, but near us. And so for the first time, probably since they were kids, the whole family, including her other sister who lives here, has a daughter, and then she has two daughters, they're moving here too. So for the first time ever, the whole family is going to be together. Now you, if you've been listening to my videos, you know that I am, I have a half brother. I don't usually talk about him. We're not close, but I grew up as an only child and both of my parents are past. So her family has really become my family. And so when we had to tell our friends that we weren't moving and I should give you background, like our friends, one, especially one of the couple thought we were really moving and did a lot of work to kind of create a situation where we could move. When they found out, they were really hurt. And they felt, here we are with the interference from the other party. They felt like, you know, that was the interference, especially in one person in particular in the couple. And all of that stuff right there, the conflict. And what I was just talking about earlier is I didn't even know the conflict was about that until months later, which is really unfortunate. And for a person like me, who's a scholar in communication, someone not talking to me is a big deal. So putting that all together of why we want to cover this conflict, I want you to see how many pieces are involved in conflict and how we're going to be defining it. Okay. I think we're done with that. Right. Okay. So when is conflict natural and beneficial? What do we mean by that? So all relationships have it. Okay. It's natural. It's natural that we're going to have incompatible goals. It's natural that, uh, we're going to have feel like there's not enough. Okay. I love to give the example of the conflict of, um, if you live in a big family or even if you don't, you know, one time I was married and in the summertime, my ex husband's three children would come to visit. And I wasn't used to that, right? Cause I don't have kids of my own. So they would come to visit and I would come home from work. And I'd be, be thinking about something that I wanted to eat because usually I, right after work, I'm hungry. I want a little snack and it, it would be gone, right? Scarce resources. Okay. Have you ever had that experience where you think, oh my God, I can't wait to get home. I made that great lasagna last night and I just going to have like a half a piece and it's not there. The kids ate it all or your brothers and sisters ate it all or your parents ate it all or whatever. Things like that. So conflict is natural. It happens all the time. Depends on how big of a deal we make of it, right? Research shows that college students have about eight arguments per week. You think that's true? Maybe some of you do, maybe some of you don't. Fa family meals, man, that's where our disagreements happen at family meals, 3.3 .3 disagreements per meal. So maybe we're not calling them conflict or disagreements, but they happen, it's normal. 81% of the respondents in this particular survey that I pulled from a textbook that I used to use in COM2, uh, survey reported that they had conflict with friends. So normal, people have it all the time. Don't flip out about it. How is it beneficial? Well, one way was we learn how to build stronger relationships with people through conflict, if we're willing to resolve it. In my case, they weren't willing to resolve anything. So that friendship has ended, but, had they been willing to resolve something or work through it, their friendship would have become stronger as a result. Because when you work through conflict with someone, you get to feel like you know them better. You can love them on a deeper level. You feel more connected to them. Think about it. When you've gone through something terrible with someone and you reconnect and you have repair and healing, you have a greater bond with that person. Viewing disagreements as healthy can change the perception, how you respond to them and see them as an opportunity for growth. 
Viewing disagreements as healthy can change the perception of how you respond to them and see them as an opportunity for growth. Okay. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. All right. We're going to stop here and I'm going to pick up on the next video about conflict styles. Um, Jenna and I teach that there's five, but I'm going to stick to what the book shows you three of them, avoidant competition and collaboration. And we're going to talk about those conflict styles. And basically they're like conflict management styles. Mostly the way we approach when there's conflict, what's our, what's our initial approach to it. Now we can change it in different situations. We might have different styles, but there's something pretty probably inherent in you. I can tell you right now, I'm a collaboration type person. Um, because of because of, I'm a communication person, but there's something inherent in you that naturally comes out. And we're going to talk about those in a minute. So we'll be right back.